I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Christine Teachout, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Okay, so you are a fifth and sixth grade looping teacher. Yes. Uh, at uh, Harry Dewey Fundamental Elementary. First of all, explain what is a looping teacher? A looping teacher, I have the pleasure of working with the same students for two years. They enter my class as fifth graders and they leave me as a sixth grader. So I am privileged to be with them for two years during that time when life is changing pretty quickly for them. Explain the value of, of looping and, and you know the impact that it has on the student. It is so amazing for both the student and myself. I have, we make relationships and we have two years to not only make that relationship, but to build that relationship. I have the honor of watching them grow from a fifth grader to the end of sixth grade. Um, and it really benefits the students because I know the, who they are by the end of sixth grade. And I can work with them on those little things that they still haven't quite gotten or really push them to those things that I know they can accomplish. And you also get to know the families over the two year period. And what's the value there? Oh, it's so amazing. I. It, it's so amazing because I become part of the family. We become part of a, a big family, the fifth and sixth grade. As a, as a classroom, we're part of a family. Um, and, for, and for the parents, they trust me. And they have two years where um, they know that their student's in a place where their teacher loves them as much as they do and is working too hard to make sure that they get and reach those goals. So now you teach at a fundamental elementary school. Explain fundamental, what that means. I love the fundamental process. Uh, philosophy that we use at our school is the whole idea of teaching the student as a mind, body, and heart. The mind being the academics, the body being uh, physical activity and uh, nutrition, and the heart being the character, teaching them to be a good person when no one's looking. The idea that your character matters as much as your academics and as much as your body matters. And it's a really good um, philosophy to have. Yeah, that was going to be my next question because <laughs> besides academics, what do you have to focus on, especially for the sixth graders? Ugh, character ed is so important. Making sure that they have that they are care they have good character, that they are um, a good friend, but also sh becoming um, determined and showing grit, um, having a growth mindset, making sure that they have they set goals and they go to reach them. Because I'm preparing these students for college and career, they they're going to go through school and they're going to have at the end they're not going to have a teacher anymore and they're going to be an adult and they're going to have real adult decisions to make and I feel like it starts as early as fifth grade. And it's all part of good citizenship too. Yes it is. So how long have you been a teacher? I've been teaching for 11 years. Okay. So um, explain to me uh, the value of professional development oh. especially with things changing so much in education all the time. It, professional development is at the heart. I, it's, who, it's how we know what's happening in education. It's how we learn about best practices. It helps us as teachers become better. Um, when I was a kid, I thought I was for sure that every teacher had a filing drawer and in February they'd open that drawer up and they'd take out that folder and whatever was happening in February, the theme or the events, that's what they taught. What I realize now is that they were learning how to be teachers every single time. And that's really part of being that lifelong learner that I want to instill in my students. That learning doesn't just happen in the classroom, that it truly happens outside the classroom. And so professional development for teachers really allows us to learn more about what's happening around us mm -hmm. and finding best practices. And you really need to keep up on things all the time because things change. And I'm not just yes. talking about technology. No, right? absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, best practices changes. There might be a better way to teach reading to kids than it was just yesterday. Mm -hmm. And the more we know, the better we can do. So uh, what are some of the big challenges you face? Uh, in your classroom every day? In my classroom I have students who range from a second grade reader to a ninth grade reader. And so that's been if that's all throughout the day. It's not just in our reading program. It's how they can read the science book. It's how they can read the history book. It's how they can understand what I'm teaching. So the biggest challenge is, is making sure kids get what they need and wherever they're at. And that's and so important to me because I want to make sure I'm not wasting the time of the kids. They need to make sure that I have them for six hours a day and I need to make sure that I'm using their time in a way that's beneficial to them. So that's a real juggling act for a teacher when you've got kids with, you know, a wide range of skills. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So what kind of a planning process do you have to go through to stay on top of that? I work diligently with my team. We have, um, in my team we have three teachers. And so we work to make sure that we're hitting all the standards and that we're hitting all the students' needs. Um, and by using a community of, of teachers, we actually, we have more brains. And so there's more ideas out there and we can work together to make sure we have the best plan for the students. So we meet um, about three to four times a day, four times a week um, during our pre uh, preparation time. What are some of the biggest challenges you think teachers today are facing? 
uh, compared to, let's say, when you started as a teacher? I think um, that the, the students have changed. And I know as a teacher, I've grown older <laughs> as much as, as, of course, time does that to you. Um, and so I'm further away from where my kids are. And so I think one of our biggest challenges is realizing where our kids are and who they are and coming to their level. It's not about us as teachers. It's really about them. Our service is theirs, is, is teaching them. So I think our biggest challenge is making sure that we're reaching the kids in front of us, um, whomever they are, whatever they look like. I think that's really important. And I think as time has gone on, there has been a lot more attention paid to the social, emotional, not just the academic. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and so how valuable is having that kind of training? I mean, you're not a counselor, but in, in many ways you are a counselor. Absolutely. I remember when I first got into teaching, I had no idea how much counseling I would be doing or how much parenting I would be doing. When I first got into teaching, I wasn't a parent. I had no mm -hmm. idea what it meant. But now I realize that it's important to be all of those roles, the nurse, the counselor, the parent, whatever role that kid needs, we're playing that role 100% of the time. And sometimes I'm not a teacher. Sometimes I need to be their friend for a moment. I need to tell them, I understand, I've been there before, and let's figure out, let's make a plan, because that's what they need right there. And so it's constantly reaching where the kid needs. So what does it mean to you to be named a Teacher of the Year, especially in such a large district? Oh my goodness, it's a complete honor. Um, we have, I work with so many amazing, fabulous teachers that to be chosen as one, it is, it's just an honor. I, I can barely find the words still for it, and it's been a couple of months. Mm. It's amazing. How did they notify you? I was very fortunate. Uh, they contacted my school principal, who created a school-wide assembly. Um, it was towards the end of the year, and so she had sent a staff email that said we need to have an email, we need to have an assembly because the student behavior is awful, we need to get them all on the same page. And so I went and I was, I was telling my students, I said, you guys are busted, I don't know what you did, but the whole school's coming out to this one. You guys are sixth grade, you better be really behaved during this. I wanna see hands folded, I wanna see the whole thing. And I get out there and she calls me up to the front and I think, oh, she's gonna make me yell at the kids? Uh -huh. Great. And then uh, our uh, superintendent, assistant superintendent walks up and, and she starts to tell me what happened. And I see my husband and I, it was just this, uh, it, was it was crazy. All, it was all a trick. <laughs> it was all a trick. <laughs> oh. It was crazy. It was an amazing, it was so amazing. Oh, that's great. No, um, growing up, were there some teachers in your life that kind of, I mean, did you always want to be a teacher? I knew in third grade I would be a teacher. Really? I had. Um, what was their moment? Mrs. Schutz. It was her name. She was. Uh, I had just changed schools. I went from a uh, Catholic school to a public school, and Mrs. Schutz was brand new that year. Um, she had just moved to the area. She had just adopted a son, and she could sing the alphabet backwards. And so she was magic, clearly. Mm -hmm. um, that year, I had a lot of change. My father had passed away, mm -hmm. and she was there for me. She made it all okay, and um, I wanted to do that for kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about even in college, were there some teachers there that you kind of said, that's what I want to do? Yeah, I had a really great professor at Sac State, uh, Lindy Valdez, who was our um, kinesiology teacher for teachers. And he taught us games and he taught us just being passionate about kids and just what that meant um, and just learning, learning through play. And that was really, really profound to me. Um, and then I had a professor when I was in the credential program, um, Tim, uh, Tom Owens, who really he 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 commented on things that i didn't know that i already did you know christine you're really reflective that's a really good thing for a teacher or i love how you share personal stories with your students that's really a good thing for the teacher things that i just did automatically because mm -hmm. it's who i am he kept complimenting me on those and so those are kind of those little treats that i've taken with me those little tokens and do those for my own students so if there's someone who's thinking about being a teacher what would you advise them oh, it's the best job in the world you're like a rock star and I didn't know I wanted to be a rock star, but I kind of am. You know, being in this, this grocery store or being in this around school, the kids just want to love you because they know that you love them. And that's the best part of my job is loving on students and just sharing with them how amazing they are for whatever their reason is. Maybe it's because they have a beautiful smile. Maybe it's because they're really smart. Or maybe it's because they have grit like nobody else and they're gonna get it. I love finding that little piece about them that makes them special and sharing it with them. And that's the best part of our job. Oh, well, congratulations to you. It was nice talking with you. Thank you. We've been speaking with Christine Teachout, who is one of two teachers of the year for the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.